Hey guys, it's Greg with Buy the Bootstraps, btbootstraps.com. Check out the store, check out the social media. Um, making a video today because I want to talk about the COVID-19 and the, vac the vaccines and the way we are handling things and how things are progressing. My wife and I recently got the Johnson & Johnson shot uh, for the vaccine. Held off for a long time about getting this shot. Don't trust the vaccines. Not because we're afraid of it or anything of that nature, but just because it was pushed through very quickly, which I don't have a problem with that, but I don't think there was enough testing that could have been done to verify the results of the vaccine. And personally, I didn't want to be the government's guinea pig on whether or not these worked. But, you know, they say that we can't return back to normal until 70% of the population has the vaccine and we can start containing this COVID. Which, that makes me want to ask a couple questions. One, why do you expect us, if we get the vaccine, to continue wearing a mask and social distancing when you have practically a 0% chance of infecting anyone at this point? You know, I thought the whole purpose, you know, when this whole entire thing started, which I've never agreed with the way that we've handled the COVID vaccine uh, and the, the steps that we've taken to mitigate the COVID, you know, COVID-19 our Wuhan virus, our China virus, whatever you want to call it. You know, we've always called every virus from its destination origin point, but for some reason, this has become a topic of speculation and controversy, which I don't understand why that is the case. It came from Wuhan, China. We know that. It, I don't see why we can't call it by its origination origins. But, okay, let's say we don't do that. It's COVID-19. I never agreed with shutting down the economy. I never agreed with the two weeks to flatten the curve. I never agreed with giving dictatorial powers to governors. I never agreed to basically forcing us into captivity in our own lives, especially in America. I think this entire thing has been completely overblown. We never reacted this way to any other virus. We never got this hysterical when it came to bird flu, swine flu, and all the other crap that happened under Obama, what happened under Bush, you know, W. We never did anything like this. I think this was primarily done because of the media overhyping this particular virus, and it just so happened to come in an election year, and God knows they had to make Trump look bad. Whether you agree with his politics, whether you agree, uh, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, conservative, progressive, it doesn't really matter, honestly. It really doesn't matter. But what I can tell you is that thousands of businesses were negatively affected, as well as millions of people were negatively affected. And I know the numbers like, well, 300,000 people died. So what? You know, more than that die every year from alcohol consumption and car crashes and, all, and everything like that. We don't ban alcohol and we don't ban cars. You know, smoking and obesity, heart failure, but we don't ban McDonald's, we don't ban Marlboro, we don't ban Camel, you don't ban Burger King. But for some reason, this virus, oh, this was the one. This was the, the, the deadly one. Even though it's shown that most people who get sick, they recover particularly quickly, and they don't usually get negatively affected. And the ones who were dying were primarily our older population, which a lot of these damn Democratic governors put COVID patients in with assisted living and senior living locations. I don't understand why that's not a huge scandal. I don't understand why we're not investigating Como. I don't understand why we're not investigating Walt. I don't understand why we're not investigating uh, Whitmore and every other governor who put COVID patients in you know, senior living, assisted living, long-term care facilities. Why didn't they you know, section them off and sequester them in a hospital until they were recovered. That makes no sense to me, and I guarantee you the death rate of the most vulnerable people, the elderly, those with immune system issues, those who were advanced in age, how many of those people could have been spared had these idiotic governors not put infected people into those locations? Those are primarily the biggest numbers for our COVID deaths, but they were already people who were going to be negatively affected to begin with. But they're also the same people who are more negatively affected by the common cold. They're also the same people who are more negatively affected by influenza. They're also the same people who are more negatively affected by seasonal allergies. But yeah, we don't freak out over that. 
and no one gives a damn either. <clears throat> it was only because it was an election year. So we've spent trillions of dollars so far giving out these stimulus checks, which don't do a damn thing in reality. You think a $1.9 trillion stimulus check does anything when only 9% of that stimulus went to the American public? Don't you need to ask the question, where did the rest of that money go to and why was so much of it, the majority of it, allocated to other things outside of helping the American people if it was supposed to be the Recovery Act? I mean, you people need to start looking at the facts and start doing your own research and ask the questions why. All that being said, we finally got the vaccine, okay? Oh yeah, one more thing I do want to say. When COVID did first hit, it was supposed to be social distance, six feet away, or if you're not going to social distance, wear a mask. And of course, then the CDC said masks aren't effective. Oh, wait, now they are effective again. Oh, wait, now they're not effective. Oh, wait, now they're effective again. Oh, wait, now you got to wear two masks. Dr. Fauci is a publicity whore who loves, you know, I swear to God, he loves that red dot on the camera more than anyone else. He's almost as bad as Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. You know, that, that freaking thing flicks on and he's ready to push people out of the way. He pushed his own damn mother into a freaking oncoming car to get his face in front of a camera. Because he likes being in the spotlight. Because no one knew about him prior and no one gave a damn about him prior. But now, he's out here saying that, well, even though we might have herd, you know, herd immunity, even though we might have 70% 70, 70 of people getting vaccinated, keep in mind, some people won't, they don't want the vaccine. They won't take it even if it's available. No, we can't go back to normal. We got to wear a mask and continue doing it for up till Mother's Day of 2022 or 2023 or 2024. Mask forever. The whole purpose of the social distancing was to keep people safe and separated. All right. If you weren't going to social distance or you didn't have the ability to social distance, then it was recommended to wear a mask. It wasn't supposed to be six feet away, mask, double mask, six feet away, double mask, stay home. Can't go to church, can't go to movie theaters, can't go to small mom and pop businesses. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to vaccines or when it comes to uh, uh, diseases or anything like that. But explain to me, and I really want to know this, and if you have an answer for this, please comment below and let me know. How in the hell is it that Walmart, Target, almost all your grocery stores, Sam Clubs, Costco, everyone else, the big box stores, they were able to stay open. And you had... Thousands of people walking into these stores, not social distancing, half of people wearing their masks improperly, but yet churches couldn't stay open, even though they were willing to social distance and make their congregation wear masks. Nope, they can't stay open. Movie theaters can't stay open there, even though they were willing to social distance and require you to wear a mask. Nope, can't stay open. Mom and pop businesses like the Ace Hardware down the street like the jewelry store and the pet store, the bo uh, boutique stores, and the arts and craft stores, and the antique stores that are down the street that, that we live at. No, all they, they all had to shut down. How do you tell a family or a restaurant or a bar? I mean, that's another thing. We got to shut down the bars at 10 o'clock at night because, you know, COVID comes out at 10. This is one fucking smart-ass virus, I swear to God. It knows time? Wow! I had no idea. That is amazing. Oh wait, it knows when you're eating your food at a restaurant where they make you wear a fucking mask to walk into the door, but the moment you sit your ass down at a table, even though you're not six feet apart, you can take that damn thing off, shove your food in your face, and it just seems to know to stay away. That is insane. This is the smartest damn virus. Man, congrats China. You guys made a badass virus. These restrictions and rules don't make a damn bit of sense. They never have. Not one iota. You punish small businesses and restaurants and people who are just trying to make a living. You incentivize people to go on unemployment because they get their benefits, they get their bennies, with their little stimulus checks, their stimmies, and you incentivize them not to go back into the workforce because you continue to pay them to not work. But you're only doing that because of COVID relief. Here's a thought. How about you step out of it? How about you walk away? How about you let the economy come back and do what it needs to do? How about you let entrepreneurs set up their businesses and actually strive and achieve? And if they succeed, good for them. But if they fail, well, that's on them too. But the government shouldn't be coming in 
and forcing people to win and succeed or fail based on arbitrary rules that don't make a damn bit of sense to anyone. You know, I keep hearing from Minnesota, for example, oh, we're following the science. What science? When you specifically ask them, where's your evidence? Where's your proof? Where's your documentation? Where can you point us to where we can do our own research and then see what it is you're comparing these to so that we can go, oh, that's a very educated, you know, that's a very educated hypothesis. I can see why you're doing it. You don't get anything. We have a dictator governor who will not relinquish his governatorial dictator powers. He's had them for over a year. And now he's telling us, oh, that by July, very convenient for that re-election time frame, he's going to start relinquishing those government controls. He didn't say he'd give up his emergency powers. He's just going to start allowing us to live our lives. Thank you, Governor Waltz, or Whitmore, or Como, or whoever the hell you want to, you want to thank. <clears throat> Democrats, by the way, just saying. Gee, thank you for letting, letting us live our lives as American citizens, you pricks. But I'm going to get back to the vaccines here because that's what I started with. You know, when my wife and I got the vaccine, we didn't do it because we cared about anyone else. I'll be quite frank with you. I don't give a damn about you. I didn't care about this damn virus. I haven't worn a mask this entire time for the most part. Very, 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 very few occasions because I refuse to be dictated to by, by people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I refuse to live my life because of feel-good feelings. Because it makes someone else feel safe. Well, guess what? If you're wearing a mask and everyone else is wearing a mask and I choose not to, that's my inherent risk. I can make the decision. I don't need you or Karen or whatever they call the Karen Mel's, Dylan, Bob, Mark, I don't give a shit. I don't need you assholes coming up to me telling me how to live my life because you're afraid. Guess what? Stay six feet away. Problem solved. It's problem solved. I make the choice. You make the choice. We can agree to disagree. And as long as you're willing to double mask, triple mask, face show, goggles, freaking gloves, and everything else, that's your choice. I think you're an idiot, but that's your choice. And guess what? And if I get COVID or would have gotten COVID before the vaccine, I would have taken the I would have taken the, the, the risk and the reward or the failure. It is what it is. I made the choice. So we got the vaccine, but we only did it because we're gonna be traveling here, and I don't want to deal with the, the issue with everyone else, you know, bitching and moaning and complaining. And I do want things to go back to normal. But I can tell you one thing, I'm not going to wear a damn mask anymore. Not that I did much to begin with, but I can guarantee you I'm not going to wear one at all. I'm not going to wear a piece of cloth over my face that does absolutely nothing. Which, but Have you seen these damn, they're not medical grade masks. Give me a break, people. A handkerchief? The little gators, as they call them? I mean, you people are fucking stupid if you think that's solving or doing anything to protect you. Apparently, you guys do not understand microns and how small the particles are and how they infiltrate and how they get through materials. If you think your handkerchief on your face makes you safe, well, I guess you feel good. If you think your little cheap-ass medical grade, not even medical grade, but those stupid little blue masks, throwaway masks, if you think those are safe and you're safe by that, well, okay. You can throw on three, four of those things, and guess what? It doesn't matter. The guy who invented them in Canada, I forget the gentleman's name, he actually went on TV and did an interview and said, I don't understand why everyone's wearing these masks. They don't work in this, this capacity. All that mask is designed to do, those cheap blue ones that you see everywhere, it's just designed to stop you from spittling at people. It's to keep particles from projecting forward. It doesn't stop the breathing, the in and the out, and the oxygen intake and the microns and the filters and everything else that go through, it doesn't stop that. Only medical grade masks actually do that. And no one is walking around with that except for medical professionals. This is virtual signaling and it's ridiculous. And if you guys want to continue living in fear, well, guess what? That's your choice. I'm not going to do that. My wife and I, you know, now that I got this vaccine, reluctantly, I'm not going to walk around with a mask. I'm not going to social distance anymore. Why? The whole point was to get the vaccine so that we can move on with life. Well, I got it. I'm moving on with life. You guys want to be scared, walk around? Fine. I'm not playing that game. And I hope everyone else who gets a vaccine does the exact same damn thing. Maybe then we can get back to some kind of normalcy. Anyway, comment below. Let me know. I'll talk to you guys later.